Let's uh, continue this conversation. Joining us now, the former spokesperson to the Israeli consulate in New York, Shahar Azani. Also with us is human rights attorney and executive director of the Lawfare Project, uh, Brooke Goldstein. Thank you so much. Uh, Shahar, let's start off with you first. I'm just reading about this online. Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, he said in an exclusive interview with Sky News that the country is not seeking war with Iran, but it will defend itself. And he also called what happened a declaration of war. Uh, what do you think about that? He call, well, calling the attack a declaration of war. Well, Lydia, thank you for having me. It, it, that's exactly what it was. It was a, not just a declaration of war. It was an act of war. And what was incredible about last night, beyond Israel's capabilities, it was the unbelievable alliance, the manifestation of the Abraham Accords as a defense treaty between the allied forces against the axis of evil. And Israel will have no other choice but to respond, but in a way and time that fits Israel. Because we have seen in our dealings with Hamas that we have settled for our defense of Iron Dome for so many years until October 7th happened. You cannot treat a cancerous um, uh, disease by Tylenol. Defense is great, but the response is very much appropriate. You know, Brooke, of course, there is this, this concern that this could become a, a broader, wider uh, conflict. What do you think about those concerns? You know, of course, you, I saw it yesterday uh, on Twitter that World War III was trending. I don't want to be hyperbolic. I don't want to scare people. But when you see an attack like this, something we haven't seen since the, the revolution of 1979, are people, are, are people rightfully concerned? Um, they are concerned, and that concern should be targeted at Iran. People are saying that this was some sort of Iranian retaliation for the Israeli strike in Syria. But you have to be living in a total historical vacuum not to understand that every day since October the 7th, Iran has been targeting Israel. It is Iran that is trying to provoke a regional war through over 20 of its proxies, just to name a few, Hezbollah in Lebanon, for example. Iran is funding Hamas. Islam, uh, Iran is funding Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Iran is funding Islamic groups in Yemen. And by the way, Iran also attacked a U.S. base in Iraq last night. And I think what is so incredible is just how calm the Israelis have been. Last night, even though there were over 798 sirens throughout Israel warning Israeli civilians to shelter where children and women and men slept in bomb shelters fearing for their, for their lives. There was no mass hysteria. Uh, the Israeli people kept calm and the Israeli military also uh, were pretty calm and basically uh, showed the world that they have the best aerial defense uh, in existence, although this is no excuse to continue to allow Iran um, to fight and, and wage war against the Jewish state. Unfortunately, and I'll conclude with this, none of this would have happened if we didn't see the United States and the Western powers coddling Iran, spending under the Obama administration billions and billions of dollars worth of cash mm -hmm. to the mullahs. Yeah. Uh, we have been encouraging a nuclear program. Can you imagine if one of the 120 ballistic missiles sent last night, just one of them right. had nuclear capabilities. We have to stop this now. Mm -hmm. And Shahar, before I let you guys go, you know, is it possible that President Biden could put pressure on Netanyahu not to retaliate? There has been some precedent to this back in uh, early 1991. If you recall, in the first Gulf War, Saddam Hussein, he began uh, firing dozens of Scud missiles from Iraq into Israeli cities. And then uh, President uh, George H.W. Bush, he actually talked him out of retaliating. What do you think about Biden? Of course, there are the reports out there that said he will not support a retaliatory attack. But can the United States, or should it, use its influence to pressure Israel not to retaliate? I don't think Prime Minister Netanyahu has the luxury of not responding to this attack. And at the same time, here is an opportunity for President Biden, the West, and the international community to immediately 
uh, impose crippling sanctions over the Iranian regime because there is between zero to 100, between doing nothing and a World War III, there are so many steps that must be taken now to curb this regime. This is an illegitimate, nefarious regime. I'll just remind you that prior to this unprecedented attack on Israel, they hijacked, they pirately hijacked a ship on the high seas. They're attacking through the skies and they're using the proxies on the ground to commit misery to hundreds of millions of people throughout the world. And something must be done now so that the world doesn't pay a much more expensive price in the months and years to come if this regime is not stopped. I have to then ask you both a follow-up question. What do you think should be done? Because, of course, Americans, they don't want to be dragged into another war. And that's exactly what many fear could happen if we became more involved and, say, tried to do a regime change. Uh, Brooke, you go first, and then Shahar, we have about a minute left. Well, Shahar is exactly right. The sanctions were working. And there is no value to pressure Israel not to respond. Not only should Israel respond, but it should do so together with all of our allies. We had France, the United States, Great Britain, Jordan, and by the way, Saudi Arabia, unconfirmed, was helping Israel. Iran is isolated. Iran is showing that it not Israel is the aggressor. So all of our efforts have to be focused on de-escalating with Iran and punishing Iran for uh, engaging in war. And Shahar? Sanctions immediately. And one last sentence is, 80 years after the Holocaust, it's beautiful to see that the Jewish people is now part of the allied forces against this axis of evil that can and must be defeated. I'll leave it right there. Thank you both so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Lydia, for having us. Thank you.